I'm going to talk, discuss about PDKs, but things above it also, also about Sonder cells, about IO cells. So my, the, 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 the talk of my, the title of my talk is API to rule all PDKs. It's a journey I already started more than five years ago when I saw that the way that PDKs were designed were not really made for easy portability. So every PDK did, did the things on its own and if you needed to port even P cells or, or, or transistors to from one PDK to the other, you had a lot of work. Um, and I wanted to solve that. Where I am now is I got quite some, I or several fundings. Uh, the GOID project I'm part of now, NLNet, which are both uh, from Europe, um, then IHP um, sponsored the IO cells development, and I'm partly employed by Chipflow. Um, so the things also in money, food on the table. So this is the setup. Is um, at the bottom. You have the the PDK master, which is actually the, the, the API I'm talking about. So that's the API where you define your technology uh, and then support functions for design, I.O., for interfacing with other tools. Uh, and then on top of that, of this common API, I have library generations for a standard cell, I.O., memory, and then you combine everything into uh, PDKs, so for each of the technologies you implement that. Um, and now we have Project Arakin, which is an umbrella project for everything on top. So you may ask why Project Arakin, why this name? First, I needed something better than PDK master-based library um, when I need to talk to people. So I said, yeah, I would like to have a project where I can say this is my project, Arakin. Um, I don't know if you remember, I'm, I'm, I'm quite old, but um, I'm fond merities of the book of Frank Herbert um, and the Amiga game Dune 2, Dune 2, which is one of the first real-time strategy games. Um, so when I was at my university in Leuven, I spent a lot of time nights uh, with that game. Uh, so I'm not so fond of the, f the, the movies, but yeah. So actually Arakin is the later known as On and then Keen, and was one of the largest cities of desert Arrakis in the seats of power. So people who have Dune will probably, so it's a city on the planet Arrakis. Um, for the rest, I don't think it has any further deeper meaning. Probably some psychs will say, yeah, you use, use this because of that, but I don't think so. So, and it's a place, so it should avoid possible, some of the possible trademark problems that you can get with using something that has been used by other people. So this is a setup. So like I said, PDK master, you can define your technology um, there. So you define your technology, the primitives of your technology, the rules, the nets, uh, and it gives you uh, an API to generate shapes on layers and these things. Then I have a, a level above it where you can define circuits, layouts, cell, library. So that's more the, the design part of it. And then I have a, an I.O. sub-module where you can interface with other tools like Spice, Coriolis, K-Layout, LevDev. Um, I try not to reinvent the wheel and reuse other tools where possible, if they're doing it right, in my opinion. So that's, uh, yeah. Probably other people have other opinions on that. Um, about the uh, standard cells and, and the in-between things I will talk later on in this talk. Uh, and then at the top you have the, the PDKs which combine everything. Um, and currently I'm actively supporting the three open source PDKs, uh, Sky 130, Global Foundries 180, and IHP uh, 0.13 micrometer technology. Um, but I don't not only want to support only open source PDKs, but also closed, uh, so the proprietary PDKs. So it's my opinion that you can also use open source tools to make a design in a proprietary technology. Like you can use open source GDC to compile a program for a proprietary uh, x86 processor. Uh, you should be able to do that also with open source for uh, 
uh, chips. So and I, in the past, I've done a 0.35 micrometer tape out, 0.18 micrometer, and in chip flow, we are also looking at the uh, Global Foundries 130. Um, so, but this is mainly whipping progress and not always kept up to date. So to give you an example, this is the Python module for the IHP things. It consists just of, on top of this base library, on top you have you had this um, IHP, and it's just a, a module of 860 lines of code that just defines your, and the main thing is PDK master, file here, which actually divides all the, the, the layers of your technology, the devices in your technology, uh, and the design rules. And then, this is the I.O. library, and I have here an underscore I.O. compliance, is that because of compatibility with their proprietary caliber deck, I had to make some special treatment of, of the layout to make it compatible, and that's why I think if you don't want to have this compatibility, you can even reduce the number of lines of code with more than 100 lines. Then you have the standard cell, and then uh, SPICE models. So saying which SPICE model corresponds with which device and these things. So this is the example of how you define the contact layer. Is You say this is a contact layer. It's a 0.16 micrometer. Uh, device with a minimum space of 0.18. It connects at, below to the active and the poly and above to the metal one. And then this is the enclosure rules to the bottom and to the top. And um, yeah, that's how you define both the VIA and its design rules around it in pretty concise way. And then you do the similar thing but for all the three uh, technologies. So for Sky 130, it's not con con it's called LICON for, for IHP, it's called CONT, and for, for Global Finance 180 MCU, it's called CONTACT. But you see that the definitions are very similar, so it should be easy to, to add new uh, PDKs, uh, for, especially for the base uh, things, for the base layers up to metal uh, top. So now I want to go into a little bit deeper into... Um, the interfacing with K-Layout. Um, so you have the technologies, and I have the things to K-Layout, export to K-Layout, and I can make a SALT package, which is the package format for K-Layout. Uh, so if you are in the tool, uh, you can have this manage packages thing, and you can install packages from K-Layout uh, repository. And I've done this based on code from idea from Thomas Perry from Spherical. Um, and as you have seen this before, the definition of this contact layer, and now you can easily have a P-cell in your K-layout generated based on the definitions here. And so it's common code, so the way how these P-cells works are the same, actually, for all the PDKs that I support. Um, currently, what I support is the vias, the transistors, and the resistors. Which this is something that I did in the last, the last one is, is, is I added uh, a few days ago. So I can have a quick demo. So I can go just up. So I start just a fresh K layout. So it's, it's with an empty home directory. Um, so if you just install K layout, you have here two managed packages. Hope the internet works. Okay. And then you say C4M PDK. Oh, yeah. Don't press enter. So you get the three PDKs that I support here, the open source PDK. You can select them and install them. Right. Then you have to restart um, K layout one time because the initialization of the um, library, the primitive library, is done when you start K layout. Um, so 
So now you can see that you have three technologies here. Um, so I prepend the name of the technology with C4M. So to say that it's my version of the PDK, uh, and it's yeah, because often the 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 the, the upstream PDKs also provide their uh, K layout support. So it's complementary. So I use the same layer definition. So you can reuse this also in the with PDK if you want. So now let's see for IHP. We select that technology. We make a new layout. And then you can do an instance, and then you get here where you can define the instance. And hopefully, I, Murphy is with me today. Okay, yeah. So I have here, then you select the IHP, a primitive library, um, a contact array. So I'm going to try to recreate the thing I showed in, in, in the slide. So then you have a P cell here, and then you can say the parameters. I want it to the bottom, to the poly, and then it's a two rows by one column. So I set that, plus I have that here. And you can do then the same thing for Sky 130. Um, new layout, Sky 130. Um, instance. Then you have to select the Sky 130 primitives, otherwise, it will be not put on the right layer. Um, and you have to then select the name for that thing. But you can see that the, the parameters are very similar between these two technologies. So once you know how these P cells work, it will be the same working for each technology I support. Um, and then again, here you can select the poly layer. And then you get then the layout for that technology for the same uh, contact array. All right, um, you had the preparation talk. It was a good preparation talk. So I always have standard cell library generation. Um, so you, how, how you make standard cells was given in the previous talk. Uh, currently I have, uh, I think a quite robust implementation for standard cell library generation. And for each of the technologies I support, I have a standard cell library with the logic voltage and with IO voltage. So for Sky 130 is 1.8 volt and 5 volt. For uh, IHP is 1.2 volt, 3.3 volt, uh, and for Global Foundry is 183 3.3 and 5 volt. Um, the views I generate at the moment: this was this I/O interfacing support, GDS2, Spice, Verilog, VHDL, Liberty, and I support Coriolis for plays and route at the moment. Um, yeah, so the, the TSMC technologies, I have not kept them up to date, and Global Foundries, that's a work in progress. And what I need to do is provide more options for contacting the bulk and of your and the annual of your uh, devices, because currently I contact them separately in each of the cells, so I lose some area there. Uh, and open road support. Uh, currently, I don't generate left views yet, and uh, the placement of the pins in my cells is compatible with Coriolis, but I need some work to put them on a grid to make it compatible with uh, open route. Or somebody else who volunteers to do it. That's also be very nice, of course. Then I also have uh, IO standard cell, uh, IO library generation. I have two sets, one for Sky 130 um, and one for ISP. So Sky 130 is based on snapback curve of I.O. drivers with an embedded pond pad, and the ISP is then with I.O. ISD, I.O. Uh, diodes protection and external. There, um, there is quite some improvement needed for layout generation. Um, the SD performance is not tested on, on, on real silicon yet. Um, and also, I don't have an automated uh, timing characterization yet implemented for uh, the I.O. cells. Uh, other things to do, memory compiler. Currently, it does not work with the latest version. It's also a layout generation problem. Um, so the API to define the technologies, I think, has now been in a state that it's stable enough that other people should be able to use it. So I invite you to talk to me if you want to use it. 
the layout, a lot of the things to do is still the layout generation that I still need quite some work and experimentation to get that right, to make that efficient and easily usable. Uh, we had a discussion on analog yesterday also. Uh, this is not only meant for digital, it's also meant for analog. I have given some presentation uh, last year at Free Silicon Conference, but I describe how I see also this being used for analog circuits. But yeah, I have to choose what I do, so I didn't have time in the last year to really make much progress on that. And like any good uh, open source project, there is a lot of work to do in the docs, tutorials, and the how-tos. Um, so if you want to contribute, I think the first thing is come to talk to me. Um, that's the first thing to do. If you want to have a look, this is the top. I will show that slide again. So, um, so this is top uh, project, and you can use that project either by installing it from PyPy, then you get a full, all, all the sub-projects or uh, dependencies. So if you install that top project, you get all the sub-projects, and you can look at the API that way, or you can clone recursively the, the top project, so all the project or sub modules, but yeah, it's more than two gigs, so maybe not do it here at the moment. Um, so again, so if you want to contact me, this is the reference. Thank you very much. <laughs> so questions? Just phones, no hands without phones. Yeah. Hi, so um, I'm not really sure uh, how to phrase this, but how is this project better or different than what OpenLine 2 does? And is, is there like a plan to use this API in projects like OpenLine or because OpenLine also provides a way to communicate with the PDK? So could you elaborate on that? So, so the question is, about, uh, is it a re-implementation of OpenLine? So I repeat it because uh, the, yeah, the yeah. mic was not. Yeah. But, um, so uh, it's, a, it's a different level. OpenLaze is something on top as an interface to all the, the tools for, for your Blazor outflow, like Coriolis or Open Road. Uh, I, I, for me, it's a base. How, how, how can you easily define new PDKs and easily support a new PDK? And OpenLane could be one of these things I interface to. So this is the, the base to make easily new, when I want to make a new open source PDK, to make that step very easy. So these, these, these six files that you say, you can quickly implement them for a new technology, and then you can support a new technology. The standard cell libraries are generated. IO, yeah, IO is a little bit more different, but the standard cell libraries are generated. And, and then you can, if, if I implement the interface into OpenLane, then you can use it directly in OpenLane also. That's the idea. Yeah, one more. Oh, no. Hi, René, HP. Um, question, do you think you can also use this concept for, the, for uh, uh, sub-micro nodes like 22, 28 nanometer technologies? Or is it because DSC rules and these are quite different? Is there potential or you, you would like to stay with a major? So, so the question is about, about the smaller nodes when you have double patterning, uh, unidirectional layouts on poly and these kind of things. Uh, double padding component. Um, there will certainly be work needed um, to implement that and investigation. Um, how easy, and that is mainly the layout generation that is to be compliant with DRC. How easy that will be, that has to be found out. I don't see a major showstopper, but I, I don't want to promise it also uh, at the moment. Yeah. Okay, thank you again. So time to move on to 